Alright, and welcome to lesson 3 for AP Computer Science. Uh, today we'll be talking about Boolean math and logic. So, Boolean math was created by George Boole in 1854, and it created it was created to uh, represent formal logic. It began with simple ands, ors, and nots. It was used in math proofs, digital hardware design, programming, philosophy, and more. Uh, it's typically used in computer science. Programmers use it when creating conditional statements, um, such as if statements uh, and while statements, because we need to have some sort of condition to know when it stops or when to start executing. So hardware designers use it to uh, design digital components using ands, ors, and nots. That's how you create registers and caches and things of that nature, and entire CPUs, actually. So we have some basic Boolean symbols in Java, and it's going to be represented by two ampersands, or will be I represent by two vertical lines, and that can be found above your enter key by hitting shift and then the key between the enter and backspace. And then not is simply an exclamation point, and this is how you define uh, a Boolean variable in Java. Typically you're not doing this though, but uh, for the case of, you know, just basic education, uh, this is good to know. So Boolean B equals A and B or not C. First, I'm going to talk about the logical AND. It's used to evaluate if both conditions are true. So uh, we have two variables, P and Q. And then in this third column here, I have P and Q uh, evaluated out. So notice that uh, P and Q is true only when uh, P is true and Q is true. And I represent 1 with true and 0 with false. So logical OR, uh, similar. Uh, explanation here. We use it to evaluate if P is true or Q is true. And I represent that with P or Q as demonstrated here. And notice that the only time it's false is when they're both false. And of course the simplest one for last logical not, it just takes the opposite value. So sometimes we need to reevaluate, uh, rearrange things or simplify expressions in order to um, code them easier or design them into hardware easier. So Boolean Algebra gives us tools to do that. Example, if you wanted to find if only one variable is true and the other is false, we would use an exclusive OR. Uh, if you're designing a digital circuit, then you would have an XOR chip available to you, but it, there isn't anything like this built into Java or most programming languages. So you have to figure it out yourself. So we make a truth table and we figure out that, hey, um, it's false only when uh, P and Q are equal to each other. So we just take the negation of P is equivalent to Q. And remember we learned this in the last lecture. So there are a few simple rules of Boolean algebra. And um, the first five that I'm going to show you here are going to be same as normal math. Associativity, you can think of uh, first of all, for all these five, you can think of uh, ors as plus signs and and as multiplication signs. So A or B or C is going to be the same as A or B or C. Associativity, same concept. Uh, just take a look at the slide. Commutativity, so if you switch the order, it doesn't matter. Uh, just like normal algebra. Identity, um, X or false is just going to be X, and then X and true is going to be, this should be X, not true. So, um, let's see here. That should simply be x, right there. And then we have the annihilator, which is just fancy for multiplying by zero. So x and false is going to be false. There are a few uh, simple rules that are unique to Boolean algebra, such as double negation. So not not x is going to be the same as x. And that kind of uh, makes sense intuitively. X or X is going to be X, same as X and X. That's useful for uh, digital design more so than programming because that's kind of redundant. So we have an annihilator as well for or, as we learned before. So true or X is going to be true. So it annihilates the use of the X there. And we also have absorption, which is simply... Um, um, just a distribution, kind of, if you just distribute it out, and you'll notice that uh, because of this OR in here, that you're not going to really need the Y variable.
Same goes for this guy over here. So that we have distribution as well. Uh, this works just like normal math. Um, so this can be like multiplying x into um, y plus z. Let's see if this shows up. And kind of. So x times y plus z. There we go. So this is kind of analogous to that. However, with the AND, which is kind of the opposite of this guy, uh, when, when you're distributing into an AND, uh, things get a little tricky because um, this type of math doesn't work like normal math. So you'll notice that uh, these are essentially the same, you just flip the signs. Then there's the most important law of all because it gets its own page. This was actually on the AP Computer Science that I took, the exam that I took, and it will be on yours, I guarantee it. This is pretty much fundamental to the field. Um, not A and B is going to be not A or not B, and the same goes with the ORs. This is not like normal math at all. However, um, it, it's pretty intuitive when you go think about it. How do we make A and B false? Well, we just have to have uh, A be false or B be false. And how do we have A or B be false? We have, we have to have both um, A be false and B be false. So here we're going to do something in the Java to kind of, you know, create an application here or apply it to a Java program. Let's say we want to create a variable which states whether it is either raining or snowing or it is Tuesday and it is fall when all this occurs. Let's try to reason through that, pause it, and don't look at the you know, the next two lines, but eh, just try to reason through it yourself, but I'm going to kind of walk through it now. So, uh, this whole either or is a pretty good indicator of exclusivity when you have these combined. I didn't mean to cross that through, but this is a good um, indicator of XOR. So we will be using XOR here. That didn't turn out to be the best drawing possible. It's kind of hard to do this on a mouse pad, but so forgive me. Um, so here we're going to implement the XOR for raining and snowing, as you can see, just like how we implemented before. The exclamation mark and the equals. So and that's all one expression. So then we're oring it with it being Tuesday, so that would represent this right here. See, we have the previous expression ORed with Tuesday, and for the last part we have AND it is false, or AND it is fall when all this occurs. So this has to all be in parentheses right here, so this guy is going to be in parentheses, just like we do right here. And I drew the, these dots on top to represent that whole enclosure. And then we have an anthid with fall, and that's our example. Tune in next time, where I'm going to talk about probably if statements and other conditionals. Thanks. Rate, comment, favorite, subscribe.